Hi everyone, I'm Coach Sierra. Thanks for joining. If you don't know me, I'm the Research and Assessment Specialist with Academic Coaching for Well Changers. And today we're going to talk about positive skewed, negative skewed, and normal distributions. Let's get started. So the normal bell curve, which is also known as the normal distribution, is a symmetrical curve centered around the mean or the average of all the data points being measured. The highest point on the curve or the highest point on the bell shape that you see is called the mode. In a normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode, also known as the measures of central tendency, all line up in the middle. The normal bell curve is a tool, also known as a graph or an image, that allows us to compare scores of individuals. These scores that are here on the left, the Z-score, T-score, CEEB score, standard deviation, IQ score, stay nine scores, and percentiles, allow us to compare scores to other individuals, as well as within ourselves. Because of that, we consider this graph or tool the ability to, uh, that we, we use this graph or image or tool as a tool to compare scores because we know if these scores had not been standardized, such as raw scores, raw scores are scores that are not standardized, we wouldn't be able to make these comparisons. That's a potential test question. What is a raw score? A score that is not comparable. What is a standard score? A score that allows us to compare scores within other individuals or within ourselves. So what's the dif difference between that normal distribution and normal bell curve? Where the normal distribution is sometimes also called the normal bell curve because the term bell curve originates from the fact that the graph used to show the normal distribution consists of a symmetrical bell-shaped curve. What does that word symmetric or symmetrical even mean? Let's talk about it. A normal distribution is represented by that bell-shaped curve and it's symmetric, meaning that it's equal on both sides. As you can see, those percentages mirror each other. That means half of the data will fall on the left and half of the data will fall on the right. This is not the case for a positively skewed and negatively skewed distribution. So it's really important to note what are some of the key characteristics about a normal distribution or a normal bell curve so we can differentiate, differentiate them between a positively skewed and negatively skewed distribution. Okay, so why is the normal bell curve symmetrical? What, what's happening there? Well, it's because the mean and median and mode all line up in the middle. Again, I'm, I'm really emphasizing these details because that is not the case for our skewed distributions, which we'll talk about next. This means for a perfectly normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode will have the same value, visually represented by the peak. That question mark should just be an arrow, so you're not missing anything there. Because of this, the peak then separates the distribution in half. So our non-normal distributions, What's happening with those? Well, our non-normal distributions refer to distributions that are not normally distributed. They're not symmetrical. The mean, median, and mode do not all line up in the middle, and you don't have this perfect bell shaped. These are either referred to as positively skewed or negatively skewed. Positively skewed also can be referred to as right skewedness. The right part of the tail or that right tail will be longer than the left. That's where the mean is. So we think of the mean being more to the right than the rest of the uh, measures of central tendency, the mode and the median. The negatively skewed distribution is a left skewness. So the left part of that tail is longer than the right tail, which is where the mean is. So the mean is closer to the left-hand side. Okay, so here we have it. In a negatively skewed distribution, we can see that the mean is closer to the left. And a positively skewed distribution, the mean is closer to the right. I am pointing, but I'm not sure if you guys can see, so I'm just going to do it with a chart. The mean is closer to the left, and the mean is closer to the right. So we call this a negatively skewed and positively skewed because of where the placement of the mean is. I also put this number scale here for number scale here for you to interpret. When we think of like, if you ask me, how much do you like my cooking, Coach Sierra, on a scale of one to 10. Notice that the lower numbers are on the left and the higher numbers are on the right. So you also might see that the fact that the mean is lower, like in value, in a negatively skewed, and the mean is higher in value in a positively skewed. And negatively skewed, the mean is lower, and a positively skewed, the mean is higher. In our normal distribution, the mean, median, and mode are all equal. This could be 
on your exam. That's why I'm pointing this out. All right, so here it is again. Important to note, to interpret the skewed distributions, you always follow the mean or follow the tail. Where is the mean located? If it's closer to the left, the mean is lower. That's a negatively skewed. The mean is closer to the right. It's a positively skewed. Remember that the mean, median, and mode are also referred to as the measures of central tendency. So you might see a test question that says, which of the distributions have the measures of central tendency all line up? That would be a normal. Which of the measure, which type of distribution has the measures of central tendencies not lined up? That would be a negatively skewed or positively skewed. I'm going to pause here for a moment for our readers just to see what's on the screen here. Again, we have the positively skewed. The mean is higher, the negatively skewed, the mean is lower. I'm going to add this information as well, just for anyone connecting terms. If data lines up on the normal distribution, it's also considered parametric. Parametric means data lines up on the normal distribution. If data does not line up on the normal distribution, it's called non-parametric. So if something is skewed, either positively or negatively, it would be considered non-parametric. If it lines up, parametric. Just adding some extra terms for those who are connecting pieces of information together. And that's all I have. So from this video, you learned a little bit about the normal distribution and the characteristics about the normal distribution that it's also considered a normal bell curve. And you should now know the difference between a normal distribution slash normal bell curve, a positively skewed and a negatively skewed distribution. Thank you so much for joining. Check out our other videos. I'm going to put my email on the screen just in case anyone is interested in contacting me for follow up questions. And then, of course, if you want to know more about our company and what we do here at Academic Coaching for World Changers, you can check out our website or email drpam at 2020 at gmail.com or drpam2020 at gmail.com. All right. Thanks for joining. Have a lovely day.